and I didn't know, and I couldn't answer the question of what it meant for my family, my daughters, and the community that I love. And it was at that moment that I, I had a choice. I could uh, continue to allow this policy and these uh, steps forward to debilitate me and to uh, make me fearful and anxious, or that I could actually stand up and I could actually speak out. And I knew I had a responsibility to do that. And so the Muslim ban repeal was a powerful moment for me last night to know that what was the impetus for me to run for office uh, has been uh, transformed now. And that we are seeing this country re-engage with this full promise, its full promise of diversity, its full engagement with the many voices, the many cultures, the, the multicolored representation of who and what we are as Americans. And so it was just beyond words to experience that and to know that we are moving forward and that we have a voice and that we are going to do good and just things. And as Shah had said, I wanted my message to be not just that Ghazala Hashmi is an American name, but that Shahid Rahman is an American name and Anum Virani is an American name, that we are all of this complex layers of uh, creating this country that we call America. Thank you so much for letting me join you. Thank you so much, Hashmi, for those inspiring words. Uh, I'll transition to our next speaker. Um, we're joined by Pakistanis for Biden's board member, Aisha Okui. She's an attorney and social entrepreneur who provides legal and compliance staffing and consulting solutions to law firms and corporations uh, in her current role as National Division Director for Robert Half International. She's a founding member of the American Muslim Professionals of Dallas, a community networking service organization, is an active member of DFW Muslim Bar Association. Aisha. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for leading tonight's celebration and recognizing the impactful work of so many immigrant communities, including Pakistanis for Biden, who helped empower the Biden-Harris campaign. And thank you to all of our allies on this call. Um, this past week has been a dream come true, uh, a dream that has been centuries in the making. So I figured, you know, why not let's just do a quick recap. So on Monday, our nation reflected on the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who reminded us that darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that, and hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. At Wednesday's historical inauguration, we welcomed our first female VP and the first daughter of an immigrant mother from South Asia that many have mentioned on this call. And we also heard from our youth. Amanda Gorman, gave me goosebumps. And she reminded us that the new dawn blooms as we free it, for there is always light if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. And on Thursday, as we have recognized, our president Joe Biden followed through on his promise to drive out darkness by ending the Muslim travel ban through executive order, alhamdulillah. This is the time definitely to celebrate our new beginning but despite being in the midst of a deadly pandemic, I have never felt the ability to breathe so freely since the shadows of the past four years. Shadows we must not forget. The struggle to, the struggle, struggle to build back better must be our top, top priority for all of us here. Because as our recent history has shown us, if those issues are ignored, they will come back and it will not be pretty. We must never forget the events of January 6th that President Biden accurately defined as domestic terrorism. I was working from home that day when my Pakistani American mother who wears a head covering was on her way to Home Depot. And as I got news of the attack on our Capitol and saw live coverage of the violent events, I felt a feeling I had not felt in a really long time. I feared for my mother's safety, and I immediately called her to return home, and no one should ever have to feel this way in America. So to my fellow immigrants, this is not the time to put your guard down. I would like to conclude by quoting the Hamilton mixtape, 
because we know who we are. We are proud immigrants and we get the job done. As many here have noted, the work has just begun. So let's get to it. And congratulations to everyone here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, our honorable speaker. Uh, it brings me um, great pleasure to introduce our next guest, um, Fatmata Berry from the African diaspora. Uh, Fatmata Berry is an advocate, a community organizer, and an attorney who uses unconventional methods in her diligent uh, representation of her clients. Fatmata has 20 years of legal experience and over 20 years of advocacy experience. As an immigrant, she understands the challenges that immigrants face and has spent a lot of her time fighting for immigrants in her community and their rights. Fatma Tafari. So much for having me. Um, Hanya, I mean, I can't even, that's, that was a great introduction. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you and Nadia for putting this together and all the other groups who've been involved um, you guys have done such a fantastic job right now that I can't even, um, I, I can't, I, can you hear me? Can everybody hear me well? Yes? Okay, great. Um, I can't even um, pinpoint where, uh, when I became enamored with you guys. From the minute you, um, you reached out to me um, a while ago and I got involved in all this, I have been very, very proud. Yesterday, just um, made all the work that we've put in together the most wonderful, wonderful of days. And I can say that as a black woman, as a black immigrant, as a black attorney living in America, seeing a black woman who's also South Asian descent raise her hand and sworn in as the first ever woman vice president of this United States brought tears to my eyes. I literally cried watching her take her oath of office. And I cannot express how much that impacted me. And the entire day was just perfect. And everyone has spoken about the, the bands. And I can say this as an African, we are ec ecstatic because of the countries, the 13 countries that were banned, at least four of them are on the continent. At least four of them are on the continent. And so we were very, very much impacted um, as it relates to this ban. And the, the, the atrocity, to my, as far as I'm concerned, the atrocity of putting that in place, separating families and preventing people from coming together was one of the worst things he ever did in office. And I'm so proud that we were able to get President Biden into office and he was able to fulfill his promises and, um, and roll back all that Trump has done to harm us. And I wanna say thank you. Thank you for having this. Thank you for putting in the work to make this happen. And I foresee four wonderful years. Um, and hopefully the people will still stay engaged because the work is not done. Reverend Warnock has a campaign that will in two years where he will be running for that seat. So everyone get ready to fight because it's still going on and it's not over. And thank you for having me. It's been a fantastic time knowing all of you. And um, I'll pass it on to, I guess, the next speaker. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sister Fatimata. Uh, next, I wanted to introduce uh, Tomas Kennedy. He is a uh, really an, an inspiring leader. He's someone we hope to uh, look forward and hear more from in the future. He is the Florida State Coordinator of United We Dream. He uh, was also elected to the DNC and we're really excited to have him join us, Tomas. I'm sure, thank you so much for the, the invitation and uh, for allowing me to take uh, part in this event with you all. I was actually just speaking with uh, another colleague that works um, in, the, in the field of, of immigrant rights and we're just talking about what uh, what a night and day shift this you know this just this past day has been right. We've we've gone from an administration that has you know incessantly attacked uh, immigrants, tried to rescind DACA, leaving hundreds of thousands of of immigrant youth at the risk of deportation. Uh, that started uh, uh, its administration with uh, with the Muslim or travel ban, whatever you want to call it. 
uh, just a, a incessantly cruel uh, um, administration, right? And in, in, in one day, uh, you know, we've seen uh, executive actions rescinding the Muslim ban, uh, protecting DACA recipients, a moratorium, a hundred day moratorium on deportation, something that's so uh, historic, right? And, and you know, even, even uh, immigrant rights advocates that had secured this promise from the administration were a bit cynical on whether it will take place, uh, and it did, right? And that's, uh, that's the power of organizing, right? Uh, you know, uh, presidents and, and uh, the, the people around them, they don't necessarily do these things just out of uh, the goodness of their hearts. They are um, subject to all sorts of political pressures from uh, all sides of the political spectrum. But it's a testament to uh, our movement uh, as immigrant rights organizers and as, as progressives and as people of, of, of decency and, and, and that, want, that want good things for, for our, our country, that we uh, have been able to push this administration to come out so strongly uh, right off the gate um, in terms of, of protecting uh, our people, immigrants, uh, vulnerable communities, and uh, taking bold steps to to erase uh, the shameful, hateful, and cruel policies of the Trump administration. So I am incredibly excited for what the future has to hold. I'm incredibly excited to share this space with you all and to keep working with you all. And, you know, as an immigrant rights advocate, as someone who was formerly undocumented, I am very, very excited for the immigration bill uh, that the administration is putting forward. It seems to be one of the most progressive uh, pieces of immigration reform uh, in history, and um, we are we're just incredibly excited to to continue to push this forward and get it done and achieve a pathway to to citizenship for uh, the 11 million or so uh, undocumented immigrants in this country, and you know and and, and their families and loved ones. Uh, so I'll pass it over to the next speaker. But again, thank you for the invitation, and and I'm so excited to keep working with you all. Thank you, Thomas. And uh, the feeling is very mutual. You always uh, inspire us greatly. So thank you for all the work that you do for the movement and the Democratic Party, truly. Uh, it's uh, an honor to uh, introduce uh, Sam Rasool, who is an elected um, Virginia House of Delegates in uh, January 2014. He represents the Virginia's 11th House of Delegate District, and he is currently uh, a candidate for Lieutenant Governor of Virginia in 2021. Take it away, please. Thank you so much for that kind introduction. So many uh, beautiful people, uh, seeing Sister Nadia and Shahid and Ambassador Siddiqui, um, <clears throat> so many people who have worked uh, for so long. I'm in my eighth year in the General Assembly, and um, what I learned very quickly is that uh, there's a lot of policy that I want to get involved in, but what's more important is the capacity uh, that we build along the way. Uh, and there was a, a time there early on in, in my four terms where there was just, you know, a very few and far between um, as far as uh, elected officials. And now look, you've got them all kind of scattered everywhere on, on my screen here. Uh, and Alhamdulillah, you have so many new um, people from our, our community uh, and Assalamu Alaikum Rep. Uh, Aish, there he is, Abraham, good to see you. And, and so many uh, wonderful voices who are, are, are uplifting us. You know, um, people look at January 6th and what happened January 6th, right? And, you know, I didn't feel exactly the way some other people felt because for me, things started changing back in November of 2015. Many, many of you remember what was happening in November 2015. That was the first time that candidate Trump started specifically talking about banning people like us and started singling out people like us. And at that point, people still weren't taking him uh, very seriously or that rhetoric very seriously. And then we know, uh, even uh, Attorney General, then Congressman Keith Ellison warned, take this seriously because we see it festering in other countries, uh, whether it be in India or in Brazil or in the UK and, and some others. Uh, and, you know, uh, Alhamdulillah, we've been able to overcome. But I'll tell you very specifically in Virginia, when the first travel ban came out, uh, we began to talk about how 
Virginia was uniquely positioned to push back against anything that had any kind of religious test. Why? Because there's only one document on the wall in the Virginia House of Delegates, that's the Statute for Religious Freedom. So we began to talk about our collective values and built up a lot of relationships across the aisle here. Uh, people who believe, you know, it's, it's something that we all must be able to stand up for. And that was one of the, I think one of the ways that we were able to weather the storm that our Republic has been tested. But one thing that we know for sure is uh, that, you know, we can't go back to where we were uh, because if we did that, we're gonna get the same thing that we just experienced. Uh, and so I challenge ourselves as we're thinking about the Biden administration and we're celebrating, and it's been so great uh, to see uh, President Biden speak with empathy and be able to uh, really touch, I think, a lot of hearts uh, with his speech yesterday and some of the work that they've already done. Uh, but to be able uh, to think about, you know, how do we make sure we never go back there? Because going back there is bigger than Republican and Democrat. Uh, going back there uh, really uh, unveils wounds that uh, are very deep for us. So let's take this moment and really celebrate how our community has come together fundamentally to shift uh, key elections, to elect um, record numbers of uh, people in the Muslim community and uh, let's also make sure that we take the opportunity to strategize what is next. How do we ensure we push back against some of these dark forces that haven't gone away, they just were defeated uh, uh, temporarily. So can't wait to work with all of you, inshallah, as time progresses uh, to figure out how we can uh, collectively uh, raise our voice and plan uh, for the future so we can build a great future for ourselves, but for our children, inshallah. Thank you so much for having me uh, today. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you so much, uh, Delegate Rasul, for joining us. Um, next, I wanted to introduce uh, Council Member Zulfat uh, Suara, who is from uh, Nashville. She has uh, been an amazing uh, uh, um, uh, leader and, and spokesperson for the Muslim community. Um, she's also been an advocate for economic justice. Uh, she's a trailblazer and she's um, we're really excited to have her join us today. Um, Council Member uh, Zulfat. Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, it's an uh, honor to join you all and to celebrate with you. Thank you for having me. Um, I got dolled up. I was like, we, we really do need to celebrate. We need to dress up even though it's uh, virtually uh, because of what we've been through. Uh, someone from Nashville, Tennessee, uh, I can tell you that uh, uh, the last two days has been uh, incredible. What I wanted to do, to be focused, I want to do four things with you. One, I want to congratulate our, our new president, uh, President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. Uh, I think that uh, we helped make it happen, but we congratulate them and we wish them the very best. The second thing, I want to thank the uh, new president uh, for all the action that he's taken in the last two days. Uh, as um, the uh, brother, the lady delegate was just saying, uh, there's a big shift uh, in what the difference in the last day. Um, I remember speaking at a Muslim ban rally in Nashville uh, when it was first happening. Um, and I used to work for the, I, I'm still part of the American Muslim Advisory Council in Tennessee. And so we were, we were looking into this and we had a, a rally and a brother from Somali was speaking. She had a aunt that was supposed to come here for medical treatment. And um, because of the ban, she was not able to come. Uh, she did pass away. Um, it was a time but it was a very tough one. And so those are some of the things that we had to deal with as a community. Uh, it's a different thing when people are against you because of your faith. It's a different thing when people attack you because of your color. It's a, it's a different thing when it's your government that says you do not have the right to be here and you do not have equal rights as, a, as every other citizen. And that's what our community have faced. And so I wanna thank the president uh, for the action that he's taken. The third thing that I wanted to do is thank all of you. Uh, 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 indeed, our community came out and our community has been active uh, over the years, but this time around, we really did well. And whatever it is that the president has done, whatever changes we've seen or we're seeing around the country with all the newly elected Muslim officials, 
is because we did it. Uh, uh, none of this would not have happened without all of us. Uh, whatever role we played in it, uh, took someone to the poll, talk about it, uh, uh, run for office, whatever it is that we did, uh, we, we are part of that success story. I want to congratulate all of us uh, for, for all that we did to bring us to this place. And the last thing that I wanted to do uh, is to remind all of us, like my brother just did, that yes, let's celebrate, let's take some time and, and be happy and celebrate, uh, but the work has to continue. I remember the feelings after President Obama was elected, uh, especially in the African-American community. Uh, we thought this would solve all of our problem. Oh my God, we elected a black president. That's the end of it. But as we all see, it wasn't the end of it. And so let that be a lesson to all of us. And we have to stay on top of things. So what are some of the things we need to do? We need to make sure that we keep our president and the people around him. We continue to make sure that they are accountable to us and they continue to listen to us. It is important for us to continue to engage in our respective community. Um, volunteer on the board, run for office, uh, volunteer at your school, at your job, be more visible. We do all these things already, but let's do it in more record numbers. It's also important for us to continue to collaborate. Uh, uh, we couldn't do this by ourselves. I will continue to say this. One of the things I would like to see in the Muslim community, it's our collaboration with the African-American community. We have to work together. There's so many intersectionality of our issues. And we have to make sure that we as a Muslim community amplifying all voices that we're equally represented. Our body is, diversi is diversified. We have a lot of diversity on our board. Brothers, sisters, different color, different ethnicity. We have to do that as well. And we have to work with other people in the community. And so thank you all for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. There's a lot to celebrate. I hope we continue to celebrate. And I want to remind all of us that the last one over that I said, it will not change our condition until we start to change it ourselves. And we have to continue doing that. So Jazakum la khair, salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, um, Council Member Zulfat. Um, next, I wanted to introduce um, Dr. Sheikh Ubaid, who um, is the founder of the Alliance to Save and Protect America from Infiltration by Religious Extremists. Um, I have known Dr. Obeid for now 20 years. Um, so I'm really excited to, you know, to be able to reconnect with him during this election cycle. Um, uh, Dr. Obeid, please uh, take it away. Okay, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, we have gathered here today to celebrate this uh, hour of ecstasy and joy, but also of relief. Uh, yes, relief because uh, as many has, have pointed out, uh, this victory should not give us a false sense of security. Having been active uh, in justice, social justice issues and civil rights issues, mostly with the African-American community, I was not surprised uh, with January 6th events. You know, President Trump was not the first one to attack immigrants and Muslims. This has become a norm, unfortunately, for the last uh, you know, 15, 20 years. Uh, Tan Credo of Colorado has talked about bombing Mecca. Newt Gingrich, claiming to be a professor of history, was spreading hate against us. Uh, and you know, the last four years have shown us that the era of racism and hatred that would lead to lynching in many cities in this country uh, was not dead. It was just stuporous. Uh, while the majority of the Trump supporters were scared white men, scared because of the demographic change, which is natural, many of them were plainly racist. Uh, you know, and this is why President Biden's, I'm so grateful to him uh, when he mentioned that democracy is fragile and that the biggest threat to America is this domestic terrorism and racism. And to that threat is also, you know, the threat is also being amplified by many who come from my country, from the country where Kamala Harris' mother came, uh, practicing racism, casteism, and Islamophobia highly educated who are infiltrating the power centers. So, you know, so this is something that we should always be aware of and not just think that the victory is over. You know, the battle is over that we have been victorious. Uh, this is why we had la launched Aspire. Uh, Nadia had spoken about, you know, a, a long history of uh, struggle, but this is a recent uh, phenomenon. So this organization that I'm representing today 
uh, joining your celebration is called Alliance to Save and Protect America from Infiltration by Religious Extremists. Uh, you know, uh, so this hour has been long in coming, four years too long. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Americans, uh, as well as people of uh, other nations and the world itself, our earth, uh, which is being challenged by climate change. So President Biden's arrival and victory is so important, important for the people of Burma and, and China who are facing genocide, for the Arab masses who were suppressed even as their flowers of spring were just about to bloom, people of Yemen, Syria, Libya, you know, people of Palestine and modern Israelis and people elsewhere, Congo, and people uh, from Kamala Harris' maternal homeland, uh, which is now the land of Gandhi being ruled by the people who killed Gandhi. So all these people are looking up to President Biden and we have to remind him. And one thing gives us extra hope that being uh, from there, the Vice President Kamala Harris will be able to tell a lot about, about this to uh, pr uh, President Biden, but we have to keep the pressure on and the request on. Uh, I will end with this short poem that I wrote when I saw a former uh, Vice President Pence being escorted out by Vice President Kamala Harris, who being of, you know, as Indian descent, I was, very happy that she won, but also relieved that she will be uh, there counseling President uh, uh, Biden. A new era has dawned, but it's still twilight. The smoke still hangs from the last fight and many a body is sc shattered, lie on the ground scattered. No time to celebrate, not yet. Lot to heal, mend and repair after we collect the wounded and the dead before we forge ahead. But forge ahead we will and resume our march till we reached the land the king saw from the hill. Ah, the thrill, ah, the thrill. The land of equality and equal opportunity, not just civil rights, but human rights and dignity that Malcolm envisioned, even when the battle was most intense. A land where extremism has been finished, the KKK, the Proud Boys and all white supremacists, along with the supporters of RSS of India and ISIS and of Kahanekai and Mahabatha Buddhist, all are defeated and only the moderates of all face will enjoy the yielding of influence. Then we shall rest to celebrate. There we shall rest to celebrate. Thank you so very much. Let's celebrate at the same time, keep our guard on. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Abed. Uh, next, I wanted to introduce Sister uh, Nazda Alam, who is a social worker. She is also a member of the Platform Committee and Field Service uh, Committee of the Massachusetts Democratic Party. Uh, she also served as a DNC delegate in 2020 and many years uh, previously. And it's really an honor to have her here uh, representing Bangladeshi Americans uh, for Biden. Uh, Sister Nazda. Um, Sister Nasta, I think if you can unmute your microphone, please. Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Okay. I don't know, what is this? Okay, can you hear me now? Okay, good evening everyone. And I am so proud to be part of this history and witness of this history. I am also the, the president and CEO of Nazdalam Foundation for Muslim Women Civic Engagement and Leadership. And we do civic education and voter registration. I was the, um, my active grassroots presidential campaign started in 2004 with Howard Dean and then John Kerry. And I, I can tell you why 2000 when Al Gore lost less than 1,000 votes, and then many Muslims in Florida voted for um, Bush because there was a vice president who's Jewish. And I felt that is needs to be resolved. So 2008, I was the chairwoman of Northeast for Muslim voter registration project. I worked for President Obama 2004, 2008 to voter registration and immigrant community and with the Muslim voters. So 2016, I cried. I was in Florida from Fort Lauderdale to all the way Miami working with the Muslim voters. And that night I cried again that Hillary Clinton, we didn't win that day. And then this November I cried because of the president Biden won. I cried three times when Al Gore did not won. 
because of the Muslim vote, 539 votes, the Muslim did not vote that. Then I cried. I've been crying since last night that what. So many of, in 2020, being a Massachusetts State Democratic member, I was the first female to support President Biden instead of my favorite Senator Elizabeth Warren. I started my phone banking December 2019, and I still got phone call from district director from Elizabeth Warren. But my goal was to win, and that's what happened. I, I fell. And I wanted to share that many of us emigrated to America because of the fear of dictatorship, political oppression, and nepotism back in our la native land. And last four years, we have experienced as the same thing when we came here to be better. better. I'm sorry. So anything, I am very grateful and hope that Biden-Harris administration is appointing all the experienced people to go to Washington and start working right away. And that is a hope. But we, everybody mentioned about the working more. Now I believe, and I am actually passing the resolution in our state committee meeting on 28th of this month, that we should have an open conversation with minority community and white community. Because every time when any terrorism happened, the Muslim, all Muslim, we feel kind of shame. We have a burden to feel negative about being Muslim. And uh, uh, thank you so much, Sister Nasda. We just have okay. to move on. Thank but you. Thank you, thank you thank so much, you. Sister Nasda. And I am again so proud to be here and Salaam Alaikum. Thank you so much, Sister Nazda. Um, next, I wanted to introduce uh, Brother Shahid al Manan. He is uh, very uh, uh, crucial and pivotal in terms of organizing in the past election, especially with Bangladeshi Americans uh, for Biden. Um, we're really pleased to have him here, um, and we look forward to working with him more in the future. Thank you, Brother Shahid. Thank you, Sister Nadia, for your kind introduction and uh, for inviting me to speak here. Uh, and thank you all for uh, joining tonight's uh, wonderful event. My name is Shahidul Manan. I'm a Muslim Bangladeshi American from Massachusetts. And tonight I'm representing from Bangladeshi Americans for Biden Harris uh, platform. I, along with a few other friends, co founded this platform to drive our community to participate actively in this very critical election uh, and to empower, of course, the Biden Harris movement among Bangladeshi Americans and all immigrant communities across the nation. And within the first few months, we reached over 3,500 members across the nation. Just in the last few months of the election campaign, we organized 12 plus GOTV events with elected members, community activists, and candidates for Congress and various state office um, candidates. Raised funds for uh, Biden-Harris and other election campaigns. We also ran million text campaigns, uh, phone banking, mail campaigns, rallies, pretty much getting all hands on deck like all the leaders in this um, uh, event have. We are so happy that we have finished the line successfully with all of you. We are ecstatic to see hope, decency, competency, and patriotism is back to America. With Biden as president and Kamala as our first woman African-American South Asian vice president, our country is back on track. But we still have a lot to do. As immigrant communities, we need to stay united participate in mainstream political and social activism, and together we will always have a stronger voice and seat at the table. I'm very happy to see this group gathering tonight, and I hope we will continue to work together to empower Biden presidency, our country, and our community in the coming days. Thank you, Sister Nadia again, and thank you all for joining us. Thank you so much, Shahid al uh, So next I have the pleasure of introducing Ibrahim Iyash. Uh, for those of you that don't know this rising star, he's only 26 years old, but he's in the Michigan House of Representatives from the 4th District. Uh, I came across his work with the Yemeni American Mer Merchants Association in New York. Uh, I think he was the executive director. And these guys did amazing work. For those of you that are not aware of all of the 
uh, bodegas uh, going out and striking the Muslim uh, due to the ban. Uh, this gentleman was part of that and very much involved in that. And it's quite impressive what he's been able to accomplish. And he started at the ripe old age of 13 as an Obama uh, organizer. And today he is a state representative. Go ahead, Representative Ibrahim. Thank you, Salam alaikum, everyone. Actually, um, I'm 27. So yesterday was my birthday and it was quite the present to have uh, a semblance of democracy restored. So I, I just wanna take an opportunity to share about why this moment is so important and how much more work we have to do. You know, the president, uh, President Biden, so glad I can call him that, uh, is committed to building back better. And I wanna take a step back and think about what that means. We know that we cannot go back to normal because normal was a system of corporate greed. It was a system that centered those with uh, the most money and those who needed the most support were often left out. So it's not enough to simply go back to the way things were, but we must commit ourselves to building back better. And the Muslim American community is a pivotal part of that movement. And when we think about what things were, right, we are dealing with an unprecedented pandemic, something that we would have never thought in our lifetimes would ever happen. Nearly 400,000 Americans have passed away and that number will continue to rise regardless of the change in power. But the way we address this issue is critically important. And I'm confident that a Biden-Harris administration will do the work of taking this pandemic head on, defeating the COVID-19 virus. But we also have to do the work of destroying the two viruses that have plagued this country for generations. The virus of anti-Black racism that was reminded and put on display into the world where a Black man had a knee on his neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds and his life was taken away for the entire world to see. And that moment was just a snapshot of the racist history that we must address and tackle the systems that have led to this perpetuation of this racism in this country. And then the disease of poverty. It's a disease that has impacted so many Americans and this pandemic and the economic crisis exasperated that very disease. So we have an obligation as Muslim Americans to step up to say we are gonna do the work of dignifying all Americans. We will work with the Biden-Harris administration where it makes sense. We will hold them accountable where it is appropriate and we will commit ourselves to building back better, not only in our communities, but all across the country. Now, I wanna share a significant story. So yesterday, one of the first actions the president did was sign an executive order to essentially cancel the Muslim ban a ban that blocked my uncles and aunts from entering this country. And when I think about what happened four years ago, just days before Trump signed his initial travel ban, my uncle was killed in an airstrike in Yemen. And to know that we might be able to bring his family here so that they can live a better life in this country, we can try to make that work. But for now, it is important that we are seeing that despite the damage that has happened over the last four years, some permanent like the death of my uncle, we can begin to repair some of those wounds and build an America that believes in economic, environmental, and social justice. So the power of my story is a testament to the American idea. The fact that four years ago, my parents would have been banned from this country, or just last year, rather, my parents would have been banned from this country, and we were able to kick the man out of office who signed that ban and sent a Yemeni American into the Michigan House of Representatives, a testament to how great this American project can, can be. And I wanna further emphasize the power of this country. My mom never had an opportunity to go to school, never had the chance to formally learn how to read and write. Yet she was able to walk in to a, ballot to a, to a polling location and walk up to a ballot box and bubble her son's name in for the state legislature this year. And that, is the power of um, America. And when we choose to commit ourselves to uplifting the very best of the American idea, then there is so much we can do beyond building back better. So I'm honored to be here. I am so honored to stand with all of you to do the work of working with the Biden, Mid Biden Harris administration, holding them accountable when we need to, and building on that politics of the possible. Assalamu alaikum, jazakum Allah khair. I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you, uh, Representative Bayesh. 
Um, next, I wanted to introduce uh, Mehreen Sayed. Um, she is with the High School Democrats of America's Muslim Caucus. Um, the High School Democrats of America is a national political organization that serves as an entry point to democratic politics for youth activists from across the country. Um, they also have seats that are available on the Democratic National uh, Committee, and they have over 8,000 um, HSDA uh, members that work at the state and local level to advance um, uh, you know, the, the ideals of the Democratic Party. Um, and Mahreen was really uh, pivotal in our phone banking effort uh, in which the High School Democrats of America also served as co-sponsors of our, our phone banking uh, effort. So Mahreen, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, hello, thank you so much for having me. Um, I just wanted to start by introducing myself. Um, my name is Marion Syed, and I'm the vice chair of the High School Democrats America's Muslim Caucus and the programs director of the Virginia Young Democrats Teen Caucus. Um, firstly, I want to thank everyone for being here and especially those who spent months to mobilize their communities and encourage them to vote. Um, we can finally relax knowing we have a president and vice president that will work to undo the damage caused by the previous administration. And as many others mentioned, this is a historic moment as we have elected our first female South Asian and black vice president. Personally, this is the first time that people that look like me have ever felt represented. Um, furthermore, only on Biden's first day, he has issued 17 executive orders that will unite this country, including on issues such as co the COVID-19 pandemic, um, immigration, specifically DACA, the Muslim ban, the census, and halting the construction of the wall on Mexico's border. Um, other orders tackle climate change, racial equality, the economy, and government accountability. Um, although we must take this moment to celebrate this victory, I also urge all of you to keep the Biden-Harris administration accountable and ensure that they're re representing our needs and what they have promised for. Um, we must continue demanding for change and not become complacent. We need to keep educating ourselves as well as organizing and fighting against the systems that have silenced the voices of many minorities for so long. Um, lastly, I encourage all of you to come together and amplify the voices of one another and continue giving back to both your local and national communities. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Mehreen. It was really a pleasure to have you uh, speak to us and to hear your words. And it's really, and I really want to echo uh, what uh, Mehreen said, because it's really about the power of youth and youth organizing that got us to where we were. Without the activism and the youth mobilization that happened, uh, we, had, uh, we had youth who were not even able to vote that were making a difference in this election, because it's their future that, has, that is at stake. And so I really wanna thank everyone for joining us uh, today. I'm really delighted that you all were able to, to join us. And um, really what this is, what we're doing here today is building bridges, uh, not only for our community, but also building bridges uh, for the future and uh, with uh, coalitions that we are, 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 are working with. And what we are doing here today is that we wanna work on specific uh, impact areas for Muslims. Uh, and relating to not only are we looking at leadership development within our own community, but mobilizing our communities in, in ways and harnessing the power uh, that we have within us, that we have you know, strong principles in Islam for social justice, and we want to amplify our voices, and we also want to, to echo the idea that representation matters. We have faced uh, death in this past uh, year of 2020, as well as uh, going into the, this new year. But we also need to recognize that this uh, pandemic that came also uh, exposed the crises that were also existing in our communities before, especially of the racism. And it's also important to note, and I think this hasn't been highlighted enough, that it was Muslims who were at the forefront and at the front lines of the pandemic in terms of as first responders and as essential workers. Uh, we also had the vaccine was um, the, the vaccine that was one of the vaccines that was developed was developed by Turkish immigrants in Germany, Dr. Um, Uber Sahin and her uh, and his partner, Dr. Uh, Oslem Terisi. And these 
the work that they did has not been highlighted enough. I think it's important that we need to, to take ownership of this narrative and show that it is Muslims that have brought the vaccines and brought the cure. Like the shifa comes from Allah, but the actual vaccine itself was brought forward by, vac by, by Muslims. And I think that that needs to, to, to be highlighted. And we also need to work going forward within our communities to, to mobilize to provide vaccines, as well as to, to work to provide information about the um, the economic policies that will be going forward. But what I think we really need to do is to set forward our agenda. As Muslims, the, Muslim, the lifting of the Muslim ban, that was the baseline. That's from where we started. What we have to do next is this is what we had done uh, during the DNC election, uh, DNC uh, convention, was to put forward what we want as Muslims. Like what is our aspirations as a community? And so for, for us, we need to know that there is an entire agency that was created, the Department of Homeland Security 20 years ago, basically to surveil our communities um, and to target our communities. And so we really want to oppose the Department of Homeland Security's attempts to install inaccurate and harmful extreme vetting uh, programs that have uh, involuntary, that include like involuntary collection and review of biometric and biographical data, intelligence streams gleaned from harmful mass surveillance programs that target uh, certain Muslims, uh, as well as extensive document verification that is designed to reject legitimate immigration efforts, information sharing with partner nations and foreign law enforcement and intelligence uh, services. We also seek to eliminate discriminatory and harmful policies and practices by the FBI, the USCIS and CBP that target Muslim travelers. We also seek to reject the use of unproven and dangerous extreme betting analytics and tactics and the use of surveillance data to prevent people from coming into this country based on biased and flawed uh, in information. We also seek to end the placement of US citizens that are traveling overseas on no fly lists that bar Americans from returning to the United States as their constitutionally protected right. And we also approve, oppose any, uh, so we oppose any and all forms of internal and external terrorism. We seek to disempower terrorist groups by eradicating US aerial bombings, drone strikes, special operations, CIA arms supplies, military advisors, as well as freezing international arms to, to, um, to sales to countries that are in turmoil. And to do that, we have to seek out diplomatic alliances among the United States and other nations to adopt a more inclusive approach uh, to governance. So thank you uh, all of us uh, for, for joining today. We really are so glad to have all of you join us. Thank you.